So I'm going to learn Vim. Yes, that's right, Vim. If you don't know what Vim is, it's basically the superset of VI, also known as the all-purpose text editor for any Unix-based operating system. You can use Vim to edit any files, and it's most commonly used for coding. It's extremely well known mainly because of its learning curve, but I say it's more well known than it's used. There are basically two types of people when it comes to Vim. People who don't know about it, or people who create memes on Reddit complaining on how hard is it to use. In my experience, those who code exclusively in Vim are like wizards that possess some unknown arcane knowledge. Somehow, editing files without a mouse in a terminal is like the ultimate power trip that puts Discord mods to shame. And because of that, I want to harness the power of this unknown mythical tool. And that is why I am going to learn Vim. So you might ask, what resource will I use to learn? Will it be some website or will it be some YouTube video? Hell no, I'm going to go straight to the source and use something called Vim Tutor. So Vim Tutor is a shell command that's automatically installed alongside with Vim. It's essentially an interactive tutorial for people to learn. There are essentially seven lessons in total and it's not that long, so let's just jump right into it. Lesson one gives you a brief summary on how to navigate the editor, make simple changes, and actually tell you how to exit Vim. If you're a developer, you've probably seen some of the, how do I exit Vim? It's so hard to exit meta. But guess what? In lesson 1.6, it tells you how to exit and save a file in Vim. Like seriously, if people spend some time reading, then I guess they wouldn't complain so much. But surprise, surprise, we all know that while developers can write code, we can't read for shit. Okay, fine, that was a little bit out of line. I know, it's just a meme. I learned that I can move the cursor using the H, J, K, and L keys, and using the arrow keys is not the move. Here's a snippet of me trying to figure this out. Lesson 1.1, moving the cursor. All right, so to move the cursor, uh, H, J, K, L. Okay, that's that's a little strange, right? Let's see. H is to go left. K is to, oh, K is to go up. J is to go down, and L is like to go to go to the side? So yeah, I guess I need to get used to it. The other sub lessons are pretty straightforward. It shows me how to go to insert mode and delete in normal mode, which is a mode where you can move the cursor around, not editing anything. Lesson two builds on top of lesson one, and it showcases more complicated navigation and deletion commands. You can delete a word with DW, delete X words with DXW, where X is the number of words, and you can delete an entire line with just DD. You can navigate using the same commands, but just omit the D. Basically, it's assuming you got tired of deleting a single character and now it has taught you how to potentially fuck up your source code. Now, fortunately, they introduced the new concept in this section, which is the undo. So you can undo any mistakes like accidentally pressing Ds multiple times and deleting multiple lines in your file, lowercase u to undo last command, and capital U to fix the whole line. Lesson 3 dives deeper into editing text. There's a put command where if you delete an entire line, it actually copies the line into the Vim registry, and you can place that deleted line using the key P. There's a replace command R where you can replace a character at your cursor. There's a change operator or CE command where you can delete a word from your cursor and insert new characters. So that's fine and dandy, but why do we have so many different commands for inserting? I suspect at some point someone got tired of going into insert mode and editing it from there, and we all know that programmers are the laziest people in the world, so we have all these nice shortcuts for these specific tasks. Oh man, I love lesson 4. We can finally search and have ease of access navigating the file. Strangely enough, there are no line numbers displayed, so in order to display what line number the cursor is on, we will have to do this awkward press of holding Control and G. To navigate to a line number, just simply type the line number and the capital G. The search command is probably the most useful command. Just type slash and type in the token we want to search. Oh, this next bit is pretty damn cool. There's parentheses search, so you can jump between open and close parentheses. How it works is if you have a cursor on parentheses and type the percent sign, it'll jump to the closing parentheses. You know how many times I've got to close brackets? Well, rarely, but this is definitely the tool I'll use if I get the chance. The substitute command is awesome, which allows you to search and replace a token with a new token. But I have a bad memory, so I'll probably forget the syntax. Lesson 
So Lesson 5 is less about editing in Vim and more about interacting with the environment outside of Vim. We can issue external commands like on Bash with this colon and exclamation character. I'm going to go on a tangent and say most developers who are using this are most likely going to be building or running code on the command line. Yeah, that's right, no stupid IDs and nice GUIs, just a good old shell and your keyboard. This lesson also introduces visual mode where you can highlight a group of text and you can write the highlighted text to a file. Type V to enter visual mode. Okay, so the majority of this lesson is a mix of different advanced edit commands. For example, we can use open command to insert by creating a new line and automatically be in insert mode. Press O to do so. The only interesting sub lesson that caught my eye is the copy and paste because I tried so hard to use Vim in the past, but I've always failed to paste text or copy and paste text in Vim. So I guess now I know. Lesson 7 basically informs you on further resources for learning Vim and setting up some starter scripts. Yeah, I mostly skimmed through this and you can tell I probably did not spend too much time on this lesson. But hey, I'll leave it up as an exercise for you guys to read. Overall, I thought Vim Tutor was a good intro to Vim. I absolutely loved how they have tiny labs for you to do in each sub-lesson. As a person who's a kinesthetic learner, that definitely helped. However, I wish they grouped the lessons together in more conceptual chunks. Like, I learned several different commands on how to insert in a file with just different flavors and it's just basically littered throughout the seven lessons i'm not sure what the reasoning was but it was a little annoying with the whole context switching but who knows maybe the person who made this threw up a bunch of useful commands together separated by quote unquote sections and just called it a day i think the million dollar question is will i use vim in the future after going through this crash course i think i want to but I know my lazy ass is just going to prefer a nicely color-coded heavy mouse usage IDE like VS Code, but I'll try. Anyhow, that was my quick intro to Vim. If you want to see more, like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.